Hi everyone, Brie here from Edge to Actuarial and in today's video I'm talking all about how much actuaries make. So if you want to make a lot of money as an actuary, give this video a thumbs up and let's get into it. Okay, so if you're watching this video, you're probably wondering how much you're going to make if you become a fully qualified actuary. And the answer really isn't very easy because there's such a wide range of uh, salaries that someone can make as a fully qualified actuary that it's really hard to narrow it down. But in this video, I'm going to try. I'm going to give you some ranges that you can expect for each stage of your career, all the way just from when you're beginning to when you're a fully qualified actuary and have 20 plus years of experience. But then after that, I'm going to go into some of the different factors that affect your salary and how you can maybe try to change things around now or in the future in order to increase your salary. So let's start with the salary that you would expect if you had two exams passed and you are going to your first entry level position. So in this situation, I would expect you to earn somewhere between about $46,000 to $71,000. Okay, so that's a, a pretty wide range, but I'm going to talk about the factors that affect that later. Uh, but yeah, so when you're just starting out, you should expect something in that range. Then once you, as you know, you can work throughout the time while you're passing exams. So as you're working, gaining experience and you're passing exams, eventually you'll pass them all and you'll become an FSA. Let's say that's around the six to seven year mark. And at that point, you can be expecting somewhere between about $125,000 to $190,000 per year. So then you're going to keep working. You're going to get even more experience and you're going to be at about the 20 year mark where you have 20 years of experience. And there's such a wide range of places you can be in at your career at this time. But it's really possible to make up to and, and even more than $500,000 a year as an actuary with 20 years of experience. Now, not many people actually get to that stage, but it is possible. It really depends on your career goals and how you progress through your career and the decisions that you make. So now is a good time to talk about some of those things that actually affect your salary. I'm not going to go into all the the different factors here, but I have written a blog post recently, like always, that goes into these different factors and talks about more than I'm going to talk about in this video. So if you want to know even more of the factors that will affect your actuarial salary, then go check that post out after this video. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to talk about is the rate that you pass actuarial exams. Now this can obviously have a pretty big impact on your salary because the more exams that you pass, generally the higher your salary is going to be. Most people start with about two to three exams, but fairly quickly pass exams while they're working. And one cool thing about being an actuary is that whenever you pass an exam at most companies, you'll get a raise. It's just automatic. So if you are passing one of the earlier exams, you can probably expect a salary increase of about two to three thousand. It's different for every company, but in my experience, it's somewhere in that range. And then once you get to the higher fellowship level exam, you can expect exam raises that are somewhere around five thousand to maybe eight thousand dollars a year. So if you pass exams quickly, you can really increase your salary quickly throughout your career and early on. So generally people see pretty big increases really quickly in the first five, six or seven years while they're still passing exams. The next factor that affects your salary is the company that you're working for. Every company has different objectives. Some of them want to try to attract really great candidates and those companies are going to obviously pay more because they want to attract the best qualified actuarial candidates that they can. By increasing salaries and paying more, they're able to make themselves stand out and those kind of actuaries actually want to work for them because they're paying a very good rate. Paying a higher salary to the actuaries also encourages them to stay longer term. If a company just kind of pays the minimum that they have to, they're going to find that actuaries come and go all the time, which is very costly because that means training all the time. You're constantly, one person's coming and another one's going and you're just constantly training people. 
when you have someone that is there for the long term and can really learn about the company and the values of the company and how everything works within the company, it's a lot easier for the company and a company is willing to pay for that. So you find that some companies are willing to pay higher salaries in order to keep their actuaries longer. Okay, the next factor that comes into play when coming up with an actuarial salary is the geographical location of the company. Now, there are two main reasons for this. First is because in some areas, there is just an overly saturated market of actuaries relative to jobs. So in these kind of situations where there are tons and tons of people that want actuarial jobs, but there just aren't that many jobs, well, then companies can afford to pay less because they don't really need to be as competitive to, towards these actuaries because there's just so many of them, someone is willing to work for the amount that they are willing to pay. On the other hand, in places where there are a lot of actuarial jobs and maybe not as many actuarial candidates, then those insurance companies or whoever is looking for actuarial candidates is going to have to pay more because it encourages people to commute or just come to the city and work there at, because of the higher salary. And the second reason that you can get more due to the geographical location is because the cost of living is just different from city to city, state to state, province to province. So if the cost of living is lower in one city, then an insurance company doesn't have to pay as much because people just don't expect as much. But when you're in a higher cost of living area, well, the insurance company has to pay more to be able to attract the candidates that it needs for its actuarial department. So cost of living can really have a huge impact on the salary. Okay, next is your position. Now, there are some actuaries that just choose to really kind of stay at a lower level of management and they just want to stay there. It could be because of family, it could be just because they don't want the additional responsibility of moving higher and higher up in a company. For whatever reason, some of them just choose to stay in a lower position. And that's perfectly fine, there's no right or wrong, but those people are going to see that even if they are a fully qualified actuary, they're going to get a pay that is less than someone that is trying to work their way up to something like the CEO or CFO of a company. Obviously, the CEO and CFO and those kind of really high senior management positions are going to pay a lot more because the responsibility is so much more and the knowledge and expertise needed is so much more. So an actuary can really have totally different career paths. One might choose to stay at a lower level. One might choose to really go up, move up in a company, and they're going to see drastically different salaries. Okay, next is all about switching companies. Now, this is one that you may not have thought of, but if you switch companies, Every single time, you're probably going to get some sort of salary increase. It's a really good way for a company that wants to hire you to encourage you to come over to their company. It's just by increasing the salary and giving you more than you're getting now. So if you're an actuary and you switch jobs every three to five years, well, that can have some big benefits on your salary because every single time you switch, you're going to see a jump in your salary. There are also some negatives to this because it could potentially be burning bridges if, if you just quit every job after three to five years. Employers might start to see a trend and maybe it'll become harder and harder for you to get jobs, but who knows? You, I'm sure you could find jobs even if you do that, but it might start to lower the quality of jobs that you're able to get. Because like I talked about, some companies want to hire those actuaries that are going to be with the company long term. So if they consistently see that you're switching every three to five years, they might be kind of hesitant to hire you. So there's pros and cons of doing that, but it is a way to increase your salary pretty quickly in, in large jumps. Okay, next is probably a pretty obvious one, but it is years of experience. So obviously, the more experience you have, the more pay you can expect to get. A lot of companies have what they call a rotation program, which allows actuaries to move from one department to another to another every, I say, two or three years. So 
you might start in a valuation position at a company, but then two or three years later move to a pricing position. And then maybe after that you move to a position in investments or something like that. And by having that exposure to all different areas, it really, really allows you to increase your knowledge and your expertise, expertise because you've just had so much exposure to different areas of the business. And that expertise can really help raise your salary because you're more experienced. You just have way more knowledge than someone that only has specific knowledge in one area like pricing or something like that. So if you can find a company that has a rotation program, and most of them do, most of the big insurance companies that hire actuaries do have these kind of programs. It's often called a student program and it includes all the other things like uh, paid study time and just, I don't know, uh, paid for material, paying for study materials and all that kind of stuff too. It's all combined in the same kind of program and it's called the student actuarial program usually. So. That is another way you can increase your salary, gaining more experience. And the last one I wanted to talk about today is your field of work. Now, I wouldn't really consider this too much when you're deciding on what area you want to work in as an actuary, but it is something to at least be aware about. So typically, uh, an actuary that's working in the PNC field so that's auto insurance, property insurance, maybe business insurance, um, professional liability insurance, anything like that, that is not related to human mortality and health and everything like that, those kind of actuaries tend to make more. Now, I don't really know that it's because they are any more skilled or anything like that. It could just be that companies that hire these kind of actuaries are maybe in higher cost of living areas, or maybe there's a bit more demand for these kind of actuaries. I don't really know why this is, but it does tend to be true that these kind of actuaries will make a little bit more than other actuaries. And on the other end of the spectrum, there are pension actuaries and retirement actuaries. These tend to be on the lower end of the pay scale. So when I said originally that as an entry level actuary, you can expect somewhere between about $46,000 to $71,000. The 46 is someone that's probably working in a pension job or a retirement job because they just tend to be on the lower end of the scale. Now, I don't think this is any reason not to go one way or the other just because of salary. If you're way more interested in one than the other and the salary is a little bit lower, don't let that stop you because you can increase your salary in any of these fields, just like I've talked about in all these other aspects. Like there's many different ways to increase your salary. So don't let this decide on which area you go into. Okay, so that is it for this video. Remember, if you want more factors that affect your salary, go check out the blog post that I linked to below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.